and the potential risks. This is, uh, I talked about all the beautiful things and now obviously not everything is perfect and not everything is beautiful, uh, especially if done poorly or poorly managed. Uh, some men, especially younger men, um, may have um, increased acne, oily skin, even folliculitis. I'm seeing a lot of folliculitis, um, which is really a response of the immune system on, on hair follicles that has nothing to do with acne, but you know, the same treatments work for acne and folliculitis. Uh, when men use higher doses, um, they, their good cholesterol tends to go down, HDL cholesterol. The main side effect of testosterone uh, is the increased red blood cells that can increase the viscosity of the blood. And that's probably, I would say, the most common one. Um, some men need to donate blood every few months um, to decrease red blood cells or decrease um, <clears throat> those. Gynecomastia is really rare when you have uh, um, normal levels of testosterone. It usually happens when your testosterone to estradiol ratio is, is low. Could also happen due to genetics and uh, IGF-1 uh, high levels. Um, so it's a very complex uh, topic that I'll speak about in the next lecture because uh, there are many factors involved and, and men tend to associate testosterone with uh, increased um, breast tissue when they start feeling uh, nipple sensitivity, which has nothing to do with the anachromastia. They start freaking out. They think it's all about the high estradiol. As I said, that's a topic that we'll speak about ne next time. Uh, increased male uh, pattern balding, especially for men, younger men, and it's not, it's also there are genetic factors involved there, but BHT may be a factor involved here. Uh, induced or worsened sleep apnea, um, especially in men that already have it or that are um, overweight. And there's also a possible increase in cardiovascular disease, like I said before. That's currently being debated. There are actually a lot more studies showing that normalizing testosterone improves cardiova cardiovascular health. And uh, only three studies showed there was an increased risk. And when they were reviewed, uh, they were found to not be very good studies at all because they were not monitoring patients properly or providing them uh, phlebotomies to decrease red blood cells. To be honest with you, I have I'm yet to see a study believe it or not, in 2018, that actually follows men on testosterone replacement and provides um, and compares the ones um, that have uh, phlebotomies or blood donations to those that uh, do not. And all the studies that I've seen so far do not include that, which is the main, main factor involved in cardiovascular risk, in my opinion. Reduced sperm production and fertility, that's, um, that's definitely an issue, especially once the HPTA axis uh, is shut down. FSH is actually zero and there's no signal to the, to the testicles to produce sperm. Um, that doesn't mean that some uh, men on testosterone replacement may not father a child, but as I said, um, there's a re the reduction in risk and there are ways to increase sperm production and quality. I'll speak about HCG on the next um, lecture on side effect management. So that's not um, even re as recently as three years ago, uh, doctors would make uh, men stop testosterone replacement if they wanted to father a child. And now we can actually at least combine testosterone with HCG or use uh, Clomid uh, to improve uh, sperm count um, and not having to um, crash your testosterone because your doctor thinks uh, that you should stop um, to increase your uh, sperm production. There's also controversy when it comes to uh, data on worsening of benign prostatic hypertrophy or, or even uh, urinary tract symptoms. Um, most, most studies published in the past two years show that actually an improvement in, in urinary tract symptoms. Anxiety, um, yes, um, I didn't believe this uh, because I actually, when I started testosterone, I felt better, I felt happier, obviously. I had a chronic illness that was about to kill me. Um, but I see um, a lot of men on Excel, I don't say a lot, but uh, men on Excel male and um, complaining of anxiety once they start uh, testosterone and it tends to normalize. Um, uh, later or when they reduce doses. Water retention is also very, um, another one of the side effects that very few people talk about. And there is increasing water re uh, retention in the first uh, month or so 
and increase. Uh, that tends to normalize after a few weeks. Um, there are many hypotheses um, on why that happens, and I will be covering the side effect management um, topic in the in part two, and maybe in two weeks or so. The contraindications: who should not be um, given testosterone, even if they have low testosterone. Uh, and the first one is um, men with severe sleep apnea. They're not currently treated with uh, a CPAP machine, a breathing machine. Um, and, and believe it or not, um, um, a lot of men out there are not tested for sleep apnea. Sleep apnea, um, in my point of view, is one of the most um, common problems that we're having out there. Uh, it may or may not have anything to do with um, body weight, in some cases, uh, central sleep apnea is actually hereditary. But it's um, if you feel fatigued in the morning, um, even if your testosterone is low, you can blame testosterone for that. But if you're not sleeping well, if you have sleep apnea, obviously your testosterone is going to be low. Another, another sign that you may have sleep apnea, uh, obviously before, um, besides snoring, and, and your, your uh, partner may be able to tell you if you are or if you're not, or waking up in the middle of the night, um, kind of out of breath or with night sweats, is um, at red blood cells. Um, men or women, obviously, with sleep apnea tend to um, have decreased oxygen levels at night and um, the body overcompensate by producing more red blood cells. So if you see uh, somebody with higher red blood cells, higher than normal, and they're not even on testosterone, that's pretty, a pretty good indication that may be the case. So a sleep study is the only way to diagnose um, sleep apnea and it's covered by insurance. Hematocrit over 50, which is the amount of red blood cells in the blood. And um, some men may have actually high hematocrit be before they even start testosterone. Those are usually the ones that uh, have recently used uh, in an anabolic steroids, or as I said, have sleep apnea or smokers or COPD, uh, or may actually have a family history of congenital polycythemia, which is high hematocrit or lung disease. So that has to be explored um, before starting somebody on testosterone because if somebody is already, has already a high hematocrit at baseline, it's only gonna get worse uh, as time uh, goes by. Uh, prostatic specific antigen also of four <clears throat> or, or higher. Um, may, uh, doctors that uh, provide testosterone at that level are liable. Uh, there's medical um, liability there. And um, it's definitely uh, something that needs to be looked at. Um, usually doctors tend to send patients to a neurologist for a workup if they're close to four before they, um, they treat them with um, testosterone. So uh, when it comes to PSA and prostate, seems, uh, that uh, seems to be a concern, although we have more and more data. Dr. Um, Kara here in Houston, he gave a lecture with me um, maybe two or three months ago, and he showed us all the data that he has now proving that in general, testosterone does not really cause prostatic cancer. And actually, uh, there's a saturation model in which um, you know, there's a certain amount of testosterone that can uh, accelerate prostate cancer in men that have uh, already have prostate cancer, but there is a certain level, higher level, where um, that no longer occurs. So I'm not going to get into that discussion because it really is something that I'd like him to um, do uh, maybe a webinar with me about. But men with prior history of prostate cancer that has been successfully treated with uh, complete removal of the prostate um, and whose uh, PSA is, is, is normal or low can and don't have to be excluded from treatment for, from TRT. Um, those that have gotten radiation or, or other uh, therapies uh, may actually have some risks involved. And that's something that only a neurologist can, can assess. If uh, the PSA velocity or the increase um, increases uh, by one more, uh, more than one nanogram, nanogram per milliliter or, or the, the the patient in the first six months, especially something is going to happen when it comes to PSA, it will happen in the first six months. So it's actually a good thing that to, to catch um, early on by week six or eight or so. Um, if, uh, believe it or not, one of the main reasons for prostatic um, PSA increases is actually a prostatitis or infection of the prostate. Especially when men start having more sex because they obviously have higher libido 
they may be more um, at risk of um, our prostatic infection. So um, by treating the infection, PSA can can calm down. So I, I tell men not to not to really freak out too much, uh, and before they they go into um, even biopsies or so, I would not go into a pr prostate uh, biopsy without at least trying um, a round of antibiotics um, to make sure it's not a, a potential uh, UTI or even prostatic infection. If uh, the PSA does not decrease after four weeks of antibiotic treatment, obviously a referral to urology is, is required and TRT cessations should be discussed with the patient. The FDA also has been sending uh, sent a warning to inform men with prior history of clotting disorders like DVT that may have relapse on testosterone replacement. Um, it seems like only 2% of men may have genetic mutations that make them more prone to having clotting disorders. And it's a very controversial uh, topic. I have uh, an interview with Dr. Bluick on ExcelMail.com. He's the expert looking at these different genetic um, uh, mutations and tests that can be done in men that, are, that may be uh, more prone for uh, DVT. And the ones that have DVT, if they're on blood thinners, they may or may not be able to prevent um, clotting disorders with testosterone. So that's a very controversial issue that I have to say needs to be settled. Uh, although many studies, uh, not studies, but actually uh, reviews have found no association between testosterone and clotting disorders. It is, testosterone is not contraindicated for obese patients and those with a history of cardiovascular um, disease um, at all, even though some doctors think uh, that that's the case. Uh, for uh, patients that are overweight, um, they may aromatize more to estradiol, um, and um, but um, and they may actually lose eventually lose fat on testosterone, <clears throat> which may improve their aromatization. But as I said, they may also have um, sleep apnea and other conditions. Um, the clothing disorder issues, as I said, if you can read it here, there's actually um, information on excelmail.com on how to contact Dr. Gluick for testing if you suspect that you, you're, you're one of those men and the 2% that may have uh, genetic influences uh, on cl for clothing disorders. Yeah.